I hear so many questions about manipulating phaser speed, how to set it up, how to manage the speed of one phaser versus another, all of those things. And in this video, I'm going to talk about first the technical details of how to manipulate phaser speed live and how to set up different um, things from a technical perspective to manage phaser speed. And then in the second part of the video, I'm actually going to talk about several different workflows that you can implement using the information discussed in the first part. Now, in the past, I have talked about the technical programming aspect of how different phaser attributes interact with each other when you're programming phasers. And if you haven't seen that video, I would definitely go watch it. It's five minutes and you'll have a much better understanding by the end of it of how to program your phasers here. But the one thing I did not talk about in that video is how to actually manipulate that speed live when you are operating and when it's in a queue and all of those kinds of things. So we're going to talk about that today. And I've already created a preset and I've already stored it in a queue. This is a very simple, just dimmer hundred zero on my spots and it is phase zero to 360. There is nothing else changed from the default in this phaser. However, when you're programming a phaser, you get a whole bunch of speed information that you program here. I'm gonna call these hard values. I've heard other people call them that as well. They're not in a recipe. This is when you program it, you set a speed, you set phase, measure, um, all of these things. And those are what I talk about in the five minute video, but those are going to set kind of a base speed for your phaser. Now that's stored in your preset and that's the speed you're going to see whenever you recall that preset or play it back from a queue without making any other adjustments. Now, if you're programming in recipes, which I highly recommend, but I'm not going to be doing primarily in this video, then you're going to also have the ability to change some values here. You can change the speed value. You can also change the phase value and stuff, but primarily um, you have the option to add a matrix, which does affect the speed. And you have the option to change the speed in the recipe line. So we're going to take all of that information from what's programmed here in the actual hard data in your phaser and whatever is applied on top of that by your recipe, that information is what we're starting with. So you have basically a speed layer one, which is what's programmed here. Then you have an optional layer two if you're using recipes and you put speed data in your recipe line. And then both of those two layers combined is what I'm going to refer to as the base speed. And you take that speed and then you can manipulate it live. You can scale it up or down and there's some different stuff you can do with that. You can adjust it live, but we're working with that base speed as a starting point. Right now, we are just going to talk about live manipulation. So I have this phaser stored in this queue. Didn't use a recipe for this just to make it simpler. I have it stored in this queue and it's playing back from this queue. So now we have it running at base speed. And the first question we have is, okay, what options do we have to manipulate that base speed? The answer is basically speed masters, but there are several ways to apply them as well as several ways to manipulate exactly how they're affecting a given phaser. If you have a phaser like mine, which does not have a speed master attached to it when you programmed it here, there's nothing in this layer. I can show you that all spots dimmer speed master is set to none. Now, if you have a phaser like mine playing back from a queue with its base speed like this, you can assign that sequence to a fader with the speed function assigned to the fader. And then when you move this fader, it adjusts the speed. Now it is always adjusting it relative to the base speed that you have programmed. You can stop it. You can set it to whatever value. This applies to any phaser in your sequence that is not individually assigned to a global speedmaster. You can also do that. So I have this phaser in my queue, but if I select my fixtures and go to dimmer, um, you have to activate this first and assign the speedmaster speed four, then now this phaser specifically is controlled by this speedmaster and it is not controlled by this one. 
Doing anything to this Speedmaster will not affect it in any way. It is only controlled by this one. All other phasers in this sequence will still be controlled by this Speedmaster. Now I'm going to delete this cue and restore this phaser without the Speedmaster and activate that again. Now, again, it is controlled by the Sequence Master. So we're going to talk about the Sequence Master sync settings. In the Sequence settings, you have a Speedmaster setting, which is currently set to none. This means that the Sequence Speedmaster is controlling its own separate Speedmaster that only applies to the sequence. If we change Speedmaster to any of the Universal Speedmasters, it will sync to that master. I'm going to set it to speed four and demonstrate that now moving either of these faders moves both. It's basically just completely giving control of the sequence speed master to the global speed master, but then assigning the speed function to the sequence fader is going to also basically just manipulate the global speed master that it's assigned to. And since this is a global speed master, you can also have individual phasers and or other sequences assigned to the same speed master to all share the common speed function. You can also set the speed for either type of speed master from the command line. I'm going to turn off my keyboard shortcuts and show you because the syntax is different depending on which kind of master you are changing. I am also actually going to unsync this just so that we can make sure we see the differences. And this does go back to its own value when you unsync it. Okay, so the syntax for a sequence is fader speed, in this case 44, BPM, whatever you wanna set it to. And that does the action. Now for a speed master, a global speed master, it's actually a little bit different. And one thing you would notice if you are assigning this, is that the only fader function available to a speed master is master. You can't set it to speed, which is kind of counterintuitive, but it's because the global speed masters are a completely unique type of object. It is a master for speed. So you're not setting speed, you're setting a master value. And it's a special type of address to manipulate this kind of object. So we're going to type master three point, in this case, four. The master section is broken up into several different parts. And one of those is speed, which is number three. So it's master 3.4, master speed 0.4, basically. And then we're going to do uh, BPM 60, enter, and that works on a speed master. Now, when you're playing with your speed masters, one thing you may run into is needing it to go faster than that. This is just not fast enough for whatever reason. So I need it to go faster. And how do I do that? Well, you can find a function for the button called double speed. And you can also just type double speed master 3.4 in the command line. And then when you click this, it doubles the speed. Now it doubles it at whatever rate you're currently at. There is a max of 256, that's as fast as it can go. This is super fast. And then obviously you're losing the ability to get a very accurate value here, but you can go super, super fast. You can also set this to half speed and that does the opposite. And you can even go below the normed value. You can divide it all the way down to 256. And then you have super, super accurate values, but you just can't go very high and this is normal so i'm gonna leave it at normal but that is an option that you have with your speed masters you can use the button or you can also fire a command i like to have my speed masters assigned to a fader with the full column of buttons and i have one set to learn speed one set to double speed and one set to half speed learn speed by the way just sets it within the current speed scale to whatever speed you tap when you tap it in an interval. These are also functions that you can assign to a sequence button. And you also have the option with a sequence to change the speed scale to any one of those numbers. Now this is super valuable because this means that you can change 
how fast the output of this sequence is compared to the output of other sequences. Let me show you what I mean. If we change this to use speed four, these are totally synced. What if we have five different sequences with different phasers in them all synced to the same master so that we can adjust them all according to the same rate, but we actually want this one to go twice as fast as the others, we can change the speed scale to multiply by two. And now these are still synced, but this one is double what that one is. And this functions the same way whether or not you see this fader. Another thing is with that, you can change this to half speed and you can adjust it and it doesn't affect the, the fader. The fader is still synced to this one but you have the option to change the speed of this phaser specifically, which I absolutely love. I'm gonna reset that to normal. And as always, you can also type half speed or double speed. You can put that command in a macro, in a Q command, whatever you need. The only thing with that is the speed scale right here is not going to actually affect your faders that are assigned to Speedmasters individually. If you have a phaser assigned to this Speedmaster and you change this to multiply by two, changing the speed scale of the sequence is not going to affect the phaser that's individually assigned to a Speedmaster. What you can do is change the speed here or the measure or whatever so that this phaser is going faster compared to other phasers. You can also do that kind of thing in the recipe lines, which I love doing. I love going into my recipe lines and changing the speed from X to half or double for different phasers compared to other ones. And that's pretty simple. That's something that you can change easily in your queue rather than having to go down here. But that is obviously a workflow preference. And so now I'm going to tell you about a few different kinds of workflows that you can implement using all of this different speed information. First off, I'm going to reset these a little bit. By the way, the way that you find a speed master is in here. Scroll down, this is the three section and you can select whichever one. I'm gonna go with pan tilt for this fader. Um, by the way, one other thing I missed is there is the speed master right here under selected, and that just changes the speed value of whatever sequence you currently have selected. So that is, um, that's master 1.7. But for right now, I'm going to have speed master pan tilt assigned here, and then I'm going to put um, the one for dim here, and the one for color right here. That's how I usually have them set up on my console. And this is part of my workflow. So I have color, pan tilt, and dim. And in my phaser presets that I have programmed, every single one is tied to one of these speed masters, depending on what attribute type it affects. So I have color, I have pan tilt, and I have dim. For anything that's unique, I just assign it to the dim speed master. I call it dim, but it's basically everything that's not either color or pan tilt. But I very rarely use anything special. Flyouts and things I typically do not assign to a speed master at all. Now what this does is it allows me to know for sure based on what type of attribute a phaser is using, what speed master will control the speed. I like having individual control over color, pan tilt, and dim because that way I can stop movement and still have my other ones going, or I can keep movement up and stop dimmer and keep color going or stop color or turn color way up and still have dim at a normal value or whatever the situation may be. So it gives me a lot of flexibility when I'm adjusting things on the fly to have these three separate speed masters. And that's the thing that I like doing, but I know a lot of people only will have one speed master that they use that everything is attached to or everything that is attached to a speed master is attached to. And that's also a workflow that works. In that case, one thing you might like to do is have different phasers set to different speeds, either here or in your recipe lines, so that when you turn that up, it is affecting everything the same, but everything is a speed that makes sense compared to everything else. 
One thing I also really like doing with the way I have my Speedmasters here, color, pan, tilt, and dim, is I like to create user variables with the name of the object. So you already know that we can use the command master 3.1 BPM, whatever, to reset this speed. And I like to do that in my cues, but I just feel like it's more intuitive and easier to type to be able to do dollar pan tilt BPM 20, for example. And so I have user variables for all three of these and I use those to adjust them. It just makes it simpler in my head to not have to remember the syntax and to not have to type it out. And I like that. But I'm going to talk about some other workflow tips now with these three different speed masters, you can always have your phasers tied to those, whether in the sequences. So maybe if you're busking, you have a sequence master per sequence and you have one phaser in each sequence. And then you can assign the sequence speed master to follow the dim speed master, for instance, if it's a dimmer phaser and you can adjust those that way. You can have it programmed into the phaser individually. If you're busking, I think it's an advantage to have it using the sequence master because then you can use half speed, double speed buttons to change that value on the fly just by multiplying, dividing. That way you can make this one slower while another one's going faster or vice versa. Or if you're programming it in sequences, I like to obviously have my speed master in my phaser. So then I know that I can adjust it with this fader or this fader, depending on what attribute it is. I also like having learn speed tied to some of these so that I can click it if I need to keep up with the beat when busking, but I also prefer to get the speed of the song in advance and put a command in my queue that sets it at that point. Another thing I've experimented with lately is having a macro with the song BPM that I can just tap to reset the BPM quickly, but there are a whole bunch of different options and I hope some of the options that I've presented in this video will help you with figuring out what kind of workflow works best for you. You have 16 global Speedmasters, and I don't know who would ever need that many, but maybe you use some of them on some days and others on other days and for different types of workflows. So there are a lot of options, and I'm hoping that this will answer some of the questions that I've received personally or seen online. I know that speed is kind of an important and often complicated thing, but if this made it a little bit less overwhelming, I am very happy about that. So I will see you in another video and I hope you have an amazing week and happy programming.